Hey guys, in this video I'm going to teach you the exact step-by-step -step process you're going to need to follow to create incredible electronic dance music every single time. What I'm going to be sharing you, with you in this video is a blueprint that took me years to create myself. So make sure you grab a pen and paper because I'm going to be teaching you some awesome stuff in this video. Now just before we get into it, I did want to tell you guys that this is a fourth video in a six part series that I'm creating at the moment. In the first video I explained to you why the traditional ways to learn how to make electronic dance music are dead and why this incredible new technique that I've created called beat hacking is the thing that will allow you to fast track yourself from not being able to make music at all to being able to create hits time after time after time. In video number two, I teach you how you can actually get started with this process and I explain it all in a little more detail. And in video number three, I give you some incredible secrets that you can actually start implementing into your own music production straight away. So if you haven't already seen those other three videos, I suggest you go and watch those after you've watched this video, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna jump straight on my computer here. I've got an incredible presentation to give you that's gonna teach you the exact step-by-step -step process you're gonna to need to take to learn how to make incredible dance music. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so here it is. Here's the entire blueprint. These are the four big steps you have to take in order to go from where you are now to being able to produce incredible dance music every single time. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Step number one is learning the software. Software. You want to get to a point where you know the software like the back of your hand. You need to be able to do something you know exactly where to go and exactly what to do so you can stay in a state of flow. The way I kind of explain it to people is when you first learn to drive, you get in the car, you don't really know where everything is and everything feels a little bit clunky. Then after a while, you feel like the car is just an extension of you. If you want to turn right, the car turns right. You want to brake, you put your foot on the brake. You don't even think about it. It's like you're at one with the car. And this is the point you want to get to with your music software. You wanna to get to a point where you don't even have to think about doing stuff. You wanna turn the volume up, you put the volume up. You wanna add an effect to a sound, you add an effect to the sound, and you're not even thinking about it. That's what will keep you in this state of flow. And You don't wanna be at a point where you don't know how to use the software and it's slowing you down and it's making everything really clunky and it's just ruining your creativity. So that's step number one. Now, I wanna introduce, introduce you guys to a principle, so maybe some of you heard of it, it's the 80-20 principle. Then in a nutshell, what it says that 20% of your time, 20% of the things you learn, and 20% of where your effort goes actually results in 80% of the results that you get. That means that actually 80% of your time is wasted doing the wrong things. So it really just comes down to knowing exactly what it is that actually that 20% is that will make most of your success. So when it comes to learning this uh, music software, if it looks really overwhelming and really confusing, yes, it's important that you understand where everything is and what everything does, but actually it's the 20% you need to learn that will absolutely fast track you to a point where you don't even have to think when you're making music. So that's a really exciting thing for you there, guys. It means you don't have to spend years learning how to use this software. You just need to get quick at using it by applying these principles, the 80-20 principles. Principles. So, step number two, music making principles. This is the next big step in learning how to make incredible dance music. You know how to use the software, now you have to understand how to make music. Now I can already hear what you're saying. You don't know how to play the piano, you know nothing about music theory at all. But the most exciting thing I want to tell you guys is that ideas are more important than music theory. Like for example, hum your favourite tune now. Think of your favourite dance track and sing it you'll probably find it's a really simple melody. It's probably got about four or five notes. Most of the best dance tracks out there are not Mozart, they're not really complicated, they're simple and effective melodies that have been created in a way that make people just wanna go absolutely crazy. So this is a really exciting thing. The thing I wanna think, I, the thing I want you guys to think about is this. Have you ever thought of a cool melody in your head? Have you ever been listening to a song thinking, oh, I can think of another really cool drop idea for that, or a really cool mashup or remix, but you're just like, I have no idea how I'd go about doing it. If that has ever happened to you, you have got what it takes to make incredible dance music. If you're watching this video, I know that you've got a love for music and you've probably got pretty good music taste. So all you need now is a way to actually turn your ideas into a reality. So just to break this down and make it seem as simple as possible for you guys, there's only ever six elements you have to think of when it comes to making music. Drums, bass line, melodies, vocals, chords, and effects. 
And that's pretty much it. Now, what you have to think about is when it comes to making dance music, you're going to be focusing on a specific subgenre that you love, whether it's tropical house, trance, drum and bass. You're going to be picking a certain type of music and honing in on it and making sure that you know exactly how to make that music. And all you've got to think about is how are these different elements, drums, bass line, all this stuff, put together to create the music that you love? That's all you have to understand at this point in the process. How are these different elements sculpted to create drum and bass or sculpted to create deep house or big room house? It's these elements that are gonna be used in your tracks and all you have to do is go through each of them and understand how they use, how they work together to create the music that you absolutely love. Now, this then takes me on to step number three, which is the really where the fun begins. This is where it comes down to creating a blueprint. So let me explain this in a bit more detail. As you know from one of my previous videos, there are always going to be hit makers in any subgenre of electronic music or any music at all. It doesn't have to be Martin Garrix, Marshmallow, Tiesto. It could be Justin Bieber or, you know, Ed Sheeran or someone like that. The fact of the matter is there's certain characters out there who know how to make hits every single time. And this is the point you want to get to. You don't want to learn how to make dance music so you can just make the same boring loops over and over. You want to learn how to make dance music so you can make music that people absolutely love and go crazy for. You want to make the kind of dance music that makes people want to follow you and go and see you wherever you're gigging all over the world, just like the big hit makers. And the truth is, these guys are not just sitting there making random songs. They have their own blueprints. If you think about it, have you ever heard a song and gone, oh, this sounds like a Marshmallow track, but you've never heard the song before. And then the radio DJ comes on and go, hey, that was Marshmallow's new track. Well, the reason is because he's following a blueprint that makes his music sound unique to him and also makes his music ridiculously catchy. So every single track he releases gets millions and millions of views and millions more followers and fans and everything. The thing you've got to remember when it comes to creating dance music is that the music that people like listening to is not a choice. I can't turn to you now and say, you have to now make the decision that you love listening to uh, opera, or you now have to start loving pop music. You'll say, well, I just can't do it. It's not the kind of music I like. You will have a certain type of music, specifically a subgenre of EDM music that you absolutely love and you have no choice in the matter. And the fact of the matter is these guys have worked out the formulas that basically manipulate you into loving the tracks time and time again. Remember, there's only these six elements you have to master, how these are used. Once you've got that, you can create your own blueprint. Once you have your own blueprint, you can create hits, build a fan base, win any competitions you want to enter, get your mu music noticed, and actually potentially do this for a living. This is really exciting stuff, guys. That's why I say that's where the fun really begins. So at this point, you know what the software is and how to use it. You know how to make music. You've got your own blueprint, so the music you're making is consistently incredible. The next step is step number four, which is making your music sound professional. Now, imagine you're out DJing somewhere and you play music by Deadmau5, Skrillex, Marshmallow, Martin Garrix, and you decide, I'm gonna throw on one of my new tracks, one of my hits that I wanna just play out and have the audience go crazy to. The last thing you want to happen when you've created these incredible hits is for your audience to go, oh no, what on earth is this? This track sounds terrible compared to everybody else's music. And here's the thing, the final little thing, the final cherry on the cake after you've made a really awesome track is making it sound as professional as everybody else's track out there. So the question is, what is it that makes a track sound professional? Well, the answer is really just two things how clean and how tight the, vol the music is, which I'm gonna explain in a little bit more detail in a sec, and generally, how loud the music is. You'll often find amateur music sounds a lot quieter than professional music. And this really comes down to two things, which is mixing and mastering. Now, most people think that you need to have a million dollar studio to do mixing and mastering properly, or you've gotta send your music off to a mixing and mastering engineer to have it done properly you absolutely do not need to have that done at all. In fact, there's a blueprint to this as well, and once you understand it, you'll be able to follow it every single time. So, 
Here's an analogy that I give people when I try and explain to them what's relevant about making music clean and tight. What exactly does that mean? Well, I want you to picture yourself out at a bar or in a noisy room trying to speak to a friend of yours. You're listening to them speak and you want to hear what they're saying, but you've got all this other noise around you. And all you want to do is turn up the volume of the guy who you're speaking to and just drown out all these other sounds so you can just have a nice normal conversation without being frustrated and having to look at their lips to work out what on earth they're trying to say. And really, mixing and mastering is exactly that. It's getting rid of all the noise and making it crystal clear what your audience need to be listening to. If you go and put on one of your favorite tracks now, it's not like your favorite DJ has just put all the instruments up front and you have to sit there working out which bit of the song you're supposed to be listening to. Really, all it comes down to is this down here. Which one of these different things do you want your audience to be focused on at any one point? Once you've done that, you will have a really clean mix. And at that point, you just need to master the mix in order to make it really loud and really punchy. Once you've done these four things, learnt the software, learnt music making principles, learn how to create your own blueprint, and you know the steps you need to take to mix and master a song professionally every single time, you will have exactly what it takes to create incredible music. And the exciting thing about that is at that point, it's just a numbers game. Think about this guys, Martin Garrix was a nobody until he released the track Animals. That track went to number one in something like 27 countries around the world, made him a multi-millionaire and he's now one of the biggest DJs on the, on the entire planet and that's just from one track. Avicii, nobody knew who he was until he released Levels and suddenly same thing, went to number one in over 20 countries around the world and he became a huge success. Kygo, no one knew who he was until he did this sexual healing remix and it blew up on SoundCloud and suddenly became super famous off the back of it. Marshmallow, no one knew who he was until he had this one hit. He did a remix of a Justin Bieber track and suddenly he was absolutely huge. It was this one track that took these guys from being nobodies to being superstars. So once you've got these formulas available to you, it's just a numbers game. You just keep going, pumping out tracks. It might be a fifth track, it might be a 20th track, it may be a 30th track, but eventually one of your tracks will get noticed and it will skyrocket you to fame. And now look at the lives these guys are living. They're traveling all over the world, surrounded by hot women, celebrity friends. They're having their absolute best lives instead of sitting in an office, looking at the clock and wishing their lives away because they're so bored with what they're currently doing. Now imagine having these lives instead of this life here, how awesome that would be. Now, as per usual guys, with this quick presentation I've given you here, the stuff that we've covered is just tip of the iceberg stuff. As much of a cliche as that is, it's true. This is the overarching stuff you need to know, the step-by-step -step process. But obviously there's a lot more to it than what I've explained here. And this is why I wanna introduce you guys to my EDM Coaching 2.0 program. This is a program that will allow you to go through a step-by-step easy to follow system that will teach you every single one of those steps in detail. You will learn each of these things in absolute detail and it'll be so simple, so easy to follow. You just have to sit there and almost watch over my shoulder as I explain everything you need to know. You'll be amazed at how quickly you go from not knowing anything or wherever you are at the moment to being able to create incredible hits time and time again. Now, there is one snag to all this. There is a limited number of seats on this course. The reason for this is that I found in the past it's much better for me to work with a small, tight-knit community of people than it is for me to just open the doors and let everybody in. The reason is I want to be able to give everybody enough time and care and attention to make sure that they're really thriving in this community because I want this community to create a load of hit makers. I want people to go out there with incredible music. Most people who start making music give up in the first couple of months because it's so overwhelming. This course has been designed to make sure that anybody who takes it flies past those first couple of months and goes on to almost create a career for themselves. Well, could easily create a career for themselves by following these steps. Now, 
EGM Coaching 2.0 is being launched on the 3rd of August. And as I explained, the doors will open until all the seats are filled and then the doors will close again. And I don't know when I'm gonna be launching this again past that point. So this is a really rare opportunity. Now, if you are interested in this and you love the idea of doing it, I have got something called an early bird waiting list. Directly underneath this video will be a link that you can go and click on to put your name on that early bird waiting list. And the beauty of this list is you will have early access to the course. So you will have access to it a day or so before the 3rd of August. Once this opens up, you are almost be guaranteed a place because if your name's on this list, you'll be the first person to be told about it. So if you are interested, make sure you click below this video and go and sign up to this early bird waiting list to almost guarantee yourself a spot on this EDM coaching course. Finally guys, I just wanted to let you know that tomorrow I'm gonna to be releasing a video where I'm showing you stats of what happens when a huge international DJ reposts one of your tracks. This is really cool. I took these beat hacking methods and applied it to a track that I put into a remix competition. It was an Alan Walker remix competition. The track did really well and Alan Walker himself actually saw the track and liked it so much that he reposted it on his YouTube channel to an audience of over 35 million people. And it was incredible. The track went on to get over a quarter of a million views in the first month. It was insane. It still gets loads of views to this day. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump onto my YouTube channel tomorrow and show you some of the stats of what happens when a huge international DJ like that reposts one of your tracks. Because this is the kind of thing that can happen to you once you start taking these steps. So if you're interested to see that video, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification so you get sold about future videos. And also make sure you go and put your name on that early bird waiting list right now so you can be one of the first people in my EDM Coaching 2.0 program. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Ciao.